Jacob's Dream, Genesis 28, 10-22 Jacob was the grandson of Abraham and the son of Isaac. God had promised that this family would be the one in whom Jesus, the Savior of the world, would be born. Abraham and Isaac both had great faith in God. In this lesson, we will learn how Jacob too was blessed by God when he placed his personal trust in Him. When you sleep, do you ever dream? Sometimes we have good dreams and sometimes we have scary dreams. Sometimes girls might dream about being a princess and having a magic wand. Boys might dream about being a great hunter or fighting evil giants. When we think about a story or some activity in our sleep and pretend that we are doing it, it is called a dream. In the Old Testament, God sometimes spoke to people through their dreams. Today, He speaks through His Word, the Bible. In this lesson, we are going to learn about Jacob's beautiful dream and the special meaning it had for him. This dream came when Jacob trusted God and worshipped Him. This lesson is found in the book of Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Bible and is part of the books of law. The books of law are the first five books in the Old Testament. Let's say the books of law together. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Isaac was the special son of Abraham, but what confusion sin had brought to Isaac's family. Just as he promised, God had given Isaac and Rebekah children in their old age. He gave them the double blessing of twin boys. But these twins were very different from each other. They fought each other even before they were born. God told Rebekah that the older one would serve the younger. One of the twins was named Jacob. He was a quiet, peaceful man who loved God like his father Isaac and his grandfather Abram. He was his mother, Rebekah's, favorite son. The other twin, Esau, however, did not love the things of God. He loved to hunt wild animals and roam the countryside. He was his father, Isaac's favorite son. One day, Esau carelessly sold his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of soup. Because Esau despised his blessing as the firstborn, he would have much heartache throughout his entire life. When Isaac became an old man, he decided to give his favorite son Esau the blessing. He chose to do this even though God had already said it should go to Jacob. When Isaac's wife Rebekah found out that Isaac was intending to give the blessing to Esau, she decided to help God out by getting Jacob to deceive his father. That was a very wrong thing to do. Jacob listened to his mother's deceptive plan and lied to his father Isaac. He put goat's hair on his arms and neck and pretended to be Esau. Even though Jacob wanted a good thing, he went about getting it the wrong way, and that always causes problems. Because Isaac was nearly blind, he was tricked by Jacob's lies and gave the blessing of the firstborn to Jacob. This meant that God would bless Jacob's family with many children and much wealth. But more important, Jesus the Savior would someday be born into Jacob's family. And through him, all the people of the world would be blessed with the gift of salvation. And what happened as a result of all these deceitful deeds? 
Well, Esau was so enraged against his brother Jacob that he planned to kill him. When Rebekah saw how angry Esau was for not getting the blessing, she began to think of a new plan to help Jacob. Rebekah called Jacob and said, Your brother is so mad, he's threatening to kill you. You must flee to your uncle Laban in Haran. Stay with him a while until Esau cools down, and then I will send for you and you can come back home. Little did either of them realize that Jacob would be gone 20 years and would never see his mother again. Rebecca went into her husband Isaac's tent and said, You know how much grief and sadness Esau has caused us by marrying these heathen, idol-worshipping wives. And Esau had married too. If Jacob marries one of these godless girls from Cana, I think I'll die. Now her real reason for speaking to Isaac was to get Isaac to send Jacob away and thus prevent Esau from killing Jacob. Isaac agreed that something must be done so that Jacob would marry a believing, God-fearing wife. So he called for Jacob to come to his tent and said, Jacob, don't marry one of these Canaanite girls who don't believe in the true Jehovah God. Instead, go at once to Haran and take a wife from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Then the elderly, blind father gave to Jacob the covenant blessing, the promises made first to Jacob's grandfather Abraham, then to Isaac, and now to Jacob. God Almighty bless you and give you many descendants until you become a great nation. May God pass on to you and your children the mighty blessings promised to Abraham, and may you possess this land which God gave to Abraham. So Jacob was sent away. As he left, his mother wept. His father was worried, and he, Jacob, was miserable and sick at heart. Jacob left his home in Beersheba and started traveling north toward the city of Haran, many miles away. He didn't have a large caravan of camels or flocks, herds or servants. He was just a young man going in search of a wife and running to get away from an angry brother. Jacob walked all day alone and afraid. By the time night came, he was at Bethel, the house of God, where his grandfather Abraham had pitched his tent and built an altar to God many years before. Jacob was so tired and footsore that he flung himself down on the ground found a rock for a pillow, and hoped that he would sleep and forget. He must have felt all alone, and probably scared. No doubt, as he thought back over the past few years, he realized he had been very selfish and deceitful with his brother and with his father. Probably, as Jacob looked up at the night sky, he began to talk to God. He confessed his sin and asked God to forgive him. He thought of the great distance between himself and God and how much he longed for the comfort of God's presence. As Jacob fell into sleep, he had a dream. It was just not just a plain, ordinary dream, but one in which God showed Jacob himself and his plan. God wanted to encourage Jacob and assure him that he was forgiven, no matter how bad he had been. In his dream, Jacob saw a ladder that reached from earth to heaven. It was the tallest ladder he had ever seen. Beautiful shining angels were going up and down this ladder, 
And at the top of the ladder that reached all the way into heaven was God himself. The Lord said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and your father Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out in every direction. Everyone on the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. When Jacob awoke, he looked around. The ladder was not there. The angels were gone. Jacob exclaimed, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. Jacob was showing that he really had a reverence and respect of God. This became a turning point for Jacob. All his life he had known about God but now he really knew God personally. He called that place Bethel, which means house of God. Jacob was full of thanksgiving to the Lord for giving him all the wonderful promises of his presence and blessing. Then Jacob made a vow or a promise to God saying, if God will be with me, protect me and provide food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. Jacob was pledging to follow God all his life. Jacob declared, The stone which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. The tenth was a tithe, or a gift, of all that he had, which would be given to God in worship. Someday he would return to this very same spot, after his visit to Haran, and build an altar of sacrifice. This would show everyone that Jehovah is the only true God and Savior. So Jacob called the place Bethel, which means house of God. Then Jacob set off again on his journey to Haran to stay with his mother's brother, his uncle Laban. But this time Jacob was a changed man because God was with him. In this Bible lesson, God is teaching us several important things. First, Jacob had to learn that God had a plan for his life, just like we need to learn that God has a purpose for each of us. We need to ask the Lord to help us know his plan, and then we need to joyfully do it. God's plan is always best, for God sees the end from the beginning, and fitting into his plan is the way to real happiness and satisfaction. The ladder of angels showed Jacob that there was indeed a way from earth to heaven. Through his forgiveness, God was making a way for Jacob to enter the gates of heaven. God was also trying to tell Jacob that there was a way back to him when one has sinned and gone far from him. He is a God who forgives when we acknowledge and confess our sin. In the same way, God in his great mercy and love to us has made a way for us to go to heaven. It's not a wooden ladder that we build, but the ladder of his own son, Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross to provide the way of salvation. He is the only way to heaven, the only gate, the only door. 
Our memory verse is John 10, 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. In this verse, Jesus is saying that he is the gate or the only access to God. The only way to go to heaven is by believing in him as our Savior. Let's say our verse again. John 10, 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jacob thought again and again about those bright, shining, majestic angels. How beautiful they were. One of the duties of the angels of the Lord is to care for God's children. And Jacob certainly knew that God was caring for him. He knew that the angels were watching over him. As God took care of Jacob, so he can take care of you. Like Jacob, we must ask him to be our savior. Jesus has made a way that we can go to heaven by dying on the cross. He loves us so much that he wants us to be with him forever. Have you asked Jesus to be your savior? You can do that today. He is the way to heaven. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for showing Jacob the way to heaven through the ladder of your son Jesus. Help us to trust in you and believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Forgive us our sin and give to us the gift of salvation. Thank you for being the door to heaven and promising that someday we will be in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Remember, Jesus is the ladder or the door to heaven.